Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So, uh, the fundamental principle of a liquid jet breakup is given by uh, uh, essentially what as you have seen that Plato initially discovered this and really uh, analyzed it using the hydrodynamic stability theory. So, we will take that up here uh, and do the analysis. Okay. So, uh, it is also the mechanism by which uh, as I said that it is a very fundamental mechanism and you can watch it in your kitchen sink that if you open the tap okay, uh, like this. Uh, and then you will see a liquid jet coming up and then it will develop some perturbations like this and then this perturbations will grow okay and then um, and at some point of time it will essentially pinch off and create uh, droplets like this okay so this is what you can uh, essentially uh, see in a, in a in your in your own kitchen sink and uh, but why that happens that will be analyzed through this thing once again as you see that as you have, as i have impressed upon you that the actual in atomization of this actual liquid jet process inside a combustor is quite involved it's involved different kinds of shapes and sizes but once again the whole as you have seen the whole philosophy of this course is that we deal with a very complex phenomena but then uh, we try to uh, look into what is the basic fundamental process inside because without that you cannot be able you have absolutely no clue how to under or you have absolutely no way by which you can understand the more complex phenomena in a more complicated environment. So, this is the uh, the thing we approach we are going to take okay. So, as you see the, the there are this is the this is how the droplet breaks up, breaks up okay and uh, but the equilibrium state if there was no instability the equilibrium state of a, of a segment of this if I just take up would have been a, and, I, and I zoom it up here would have been something like this. It is a cylinder right. I mean cylinder and uh, I define the surface tension uh, of this liquid cylinder by sigma density by rho and the print in pressure inside which is uniform throughout by P0 and this is the surface normal which is pointing outside and it has a radius which is given by R0. If this is the equilibrium state or the steady state. But then as you have seen here that this does not remain steady like this, this is a base state it actually in reality what happens is that when the kitchen when the when this liquid jet comes out there are infinitesimally small disturbance everywhere present from numerous sources noises from numerous sources that act on this jet and this noise essentially gets amplified in certain wavelengths certain particular wavelengths and those creates a disturbance uh, those gets amplified to create certain uh, certain perturbations on the on this nice cylindrical state. So, then we will consider the perturbed state of this jet. or a smaller perturbation probably. And this is of course, this is a cylinder and this part of state is R0 plus epsilon ok. This is R0 the base state and this part of state radius at this uh, sinusoidal oscillations the maximum uh, part of uh, not the power maximum, but the uh, certain at a certain point of time this part operation is given by R0 plus epsilon. Once again the properties remain same sigma rho p0 plus p tilde. Sigma and rho remain same, but now because this this has developed some perturbations 
and this perturbation has led to uh, uh, essentially change in the curvature. Okay. So, as a result of that the pressure inside changes and this perturb pressure is given by P0 plus P tilde all right. Now, here at the initial state, so talking about curvature, let us find out how we can relate the pressure to the to the curvature and that can be related by Young Laplace's equation which is called which is given by P0 in the steady state. Okay. In the steady state P0 is equal to sigma times divergence of normal which is nothing but the curvature and this implies P0 is equal to sigma by R0. Okay. So, here the radius in this cylinder in this steady state this uh, radius is R0 and the pressure is P0. So, P0 and we can neglect essentially outside pressure you can even consider the vacuum. But by the way the assumptions here in this uh, it is at this point it is time to state the assumptions um, before we go into this then there is number one uh, no surrounding air, number two no gravity. Okay. So, and this uh, number 3 is that liquid is inviscid. Okay. So, uh, so there is no surrounding air, then there is no gravity and then the liquid is inviscid and in that set state essentially you can we can write that because the pressure P0 pressure is P, P is uh, P outside is 0, we can write that P0 is equal to sigma times n. Uh, uh, is equal to sigma times n and as a result the P0 is equal to sigma by R0. This is the Young Laplace equation where we essentially relate the pressure inside the liquid uh, uh, cylinder to the to its surface tension force. Essentially to balance the, the, the to just like a pressure vessel to balance the pressure you must uh, generate like a hoop stress okay? and the surface tension essentially acts like that. So, uh, whereas in this perturbed state Okay. Mm, now, we can if we consider the small perturbations as you see that we have written it as R0 plus epsilon where epsilon is a very small quantity. So, which means that our in our perturbations are basically, basically infinitesimal that is uh, infinitesimal if small perturbations are infinitesimally small and uh, these uh, perturbations uh, essentially happen in the z direction whereas this is r and this is z and this is z okay so we can say that now uh, the now uh, our perturbations are essentially r0 plus epsilon and we can um, essentially write it uh, like that uh, that that r tilde okay this uh, uh, this uh, uh, we will uh, we will consider the, evolu the evolution of infinitesimal perturbations on the interface and the reason is that this will um, because if you keep the perturbations to be small we can will be able to linearize our equations if the perturbations become large and the equations will be non-linear and we cannot do the analysis. So, to make the uh, system um, amenable for analysis mathematical analysis we will keep the infinitesimal we will keep the perturbations to be small and with that we will be able to do the linearized uh, 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 linearized uh, um, uh, hydrodynamic instability analysis. Okay. So, we write that R tilde that is this uh, now the part of the columnar surface takes the form R tilde is equal to R 0 plus epsilon okay, times e to the power of omega t plus i k z. Okay. So, of course, we see that we have, a, we have assumed a, a part of state Okay, so, uh, this is uh, essentially uh, oh sorry this we will write this as a different notation actually or we will write this as okay, and this is uh, this to a different notation. So, this whole thing is essentially this uh, this E uh, okay, and this is our epsilon and uh, so, this whole thing can be considered to be like this. Okay. Oh, anyways, so and then we consider that in the z directions, the perturbations has a sinusoidal oscillations, okay, and the the wavelength of those or the wave number of those oscillations is given by k, and in time domain we do not know uh, whether it will be sinusoidal or not, 
uh, it can be exponentially growing if omega is positive, it can be uh, damping if omega is negative and if omega is complex it will lead to a sinusoidal oscillations in time also. Okay? So, which we do not know which will should come out of the analysis. Okay? And of course, here the constraint is that for the perturbation to be small your epsilon should be much much smaller than R0. Okay? And uh, as such essentially the omega is this uh, is a growth rate of the instability, uh, we can write this. and k is the wave number, the spatial wave number. Okay. And the wavelength for this is essentially lambda should be is equal to 2 pi by k. All right. Now, we can denote uh, once we have this perturbations on r uh, on the radius. Of course, the velocity as you have seen that the pressure has been uh, the pressure there is a pressure perturbations. Uh, so, u r which is the velocity which is the uh, the radial component of velocity that will also have a perturbation say of u r tilde okay, which is the radial component of the perturbation. and u z is tilde is the axial component of the perturbation. And similarly, p tilde is the uh, is a, is a perturb pressure as you have seen here. Okay. So, u r is now essentially the, the radial velocity is given by u r plus the I or u r 0 plus u r tilde, u z now is given by u z 0 plus u z tilde, p is given by p 0 plus p tilde. Okay. That is these are perturbations on the base state. Okay. So, that is how it is. And then uh, then we expect okay, uh, then if we put these things in the in the Navier-Stokes equation. Okay, of course, you see that there is no uh, in this uh, momentum uh, we can assume the density to be constant and uh, if we do that and if we neglect uh, because this uh, 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 with this uh, the, the terms are essentially small. So, we can ex we can essentially neglect the non-linear contributions from the perturbations and what we do is that if we substitute u r tilde u z tilde p tilde or substitute the current let us write it clearly these are the steady state quantities and these are the perturbations and p into into navier stokes equations okay and retain terms of the order epsilon that is the small terms. Okay. Then we get the R momentum equation becomes the z momentum equation becomes
this is the consequence we can only write this because we have assumed the perturbations to be small and that is why this uh, this uh, nonlinear terms like the Rand's terms do not come here that you must uh, pay attention to and the linearized continuity equation becomes this one okay now we have already assumed the form of the perturbation for the radius now we can expect okay we can expect that the disturbances of the perturbations in the velocity and pressure also will have the same form of the surface disturbance We expect that the per perturbations in velocities and pressure will have the same form as that of the surface perturbation which was So then in that case our u r tilde and u z tilde and p tilde these part of quantities are given by this is small this is the amplitude which is a function of r. omega t plus i k z similar this form the amplitude is only a function of r whether the rest is a function of z and t okay now if we substitute this if we substitute these equations into the that is if we substitute this into the r momentum equation z momentum equation and the linearized continuity equation what we will get is the following we will get the momentum equations will be in this form that is after we substitute this equations we will get the momentum equations to be this form you should work it out and I am just showing you the final results. Okay. This is the amplitude p r because this p is only a function of r because if you remember that u r is equal to r r e to the power of omega t u z tilde
if this is so then the z momentum equation becomes you get complex notations because we have in z you have got i k z which you do not have in r and then the continuity equation becomes d r d r this r is the amplitude where a small r is the coordinate radius is a radial coordinate so if we eliminate z r and p r we get the following equation for r r and that is given by Now, this one is your governing equation. Okay. So, basically this equation contains comes from the continuity equation as well as uh, which has been where the different terms of pressure and uh, z uh, the pressure amplitude and the z uh, and the and the z uh, and the amplitude of u z has been replaced by the momentum equation. So, this equation becomes essentially the Bessel equation of order 1 okay. and it may be written in terms of modified Bessel functions of the first and second kind that is it can be written like as a sum of I 1 k r plus k 1 k r okay. but as you know that uh, as uh, r tends to 0 where of course, it is the, the equation has to be defined uh, your k 1 tends to infinity. So, then this means c 2 is equal to 0 as a result of that r becomes is equal to c i 1 k r. Okay. Once again k is the your wave number uh, which comes in the in the z direction all right. So, now, now that we know that uh, your uh, your r r is given by uh, the Bessel functions of first kind. We can obtain a pressure also uh, like this. Okay and uh, so we have got the uh, this uh, r r the amplitude of the the surface fluctuations and the amplitude of the pressure fluctuations in the radial directions as the bessel functions of first kind okay and now um, uh, now what we need to know is that to uh, but we need we don't we have basically in this things we have basically uh, this constants are there so to eliminate the constants we need the appropriate boundary conditions so what can be a boundary condition the boundary conditions can be that if you this was the part of state the velocity of this surface is essentially equal to the u r velocity. Okay. So, uh, once again this uh, this uh, this uh, velocity here v is equal to u r okay. and that v is nothing but your d uh, r tilde d t okay. and uh, uh, for so the boundary condition is this that your d r tilde d t is equal to your u r tilde we approximate it like this and then with this we can find out the constant c to be essentially is equal to e omega times i 1 k r 0 ok fine. And then if you do this uh, the pressure balance I will not go into that and then we can obtain this uh, the, the, the pressure perturbation solution explicitly which is given by this thing epsilon sigma by r 0 square and 1 minus k square r 0 square times e to the power of omega t plus i k z. Okay. This we can do get. Now, next is the very important thing that is 
our entire goal of this analysis is to obtain the dispersion relation. What is the dispersion relation? Dispersion relation is the expression for your omega, okay. That is the growth rate. So, the growth rate Um, is, a, is, a, is a relationship of the growth rate omega in terms of the wave number k. So, we get the dispersion relation for omega or growth rate in terms of k and that is given by you can solve it yourself it is very simple. Just algebra even though this equation might look intimidating. this is the most important term. The whole equation is important in terms of quantitativeness, but qualitatively this is the most important terms. Why? Because you see uh, our r, the, the perturbation r, okay, this was given like this epsilon e to the power of omega t plus i k z. Okay. So, if omega is positive it means that the the, the 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 growth rate okay if omega is positive then this r will have an exponential behavior so it will continue to increase okay whereas if this omega is negative it will have a damped behavior whereas it will be unstable if omega is complex so now you have a dispersion relation omega square is equal to given by this thing and all these things are positive. The only thing that can be negative is this one. That is omega square will be less than 0. This means omega will be will, will have imaginary components if k r 0 is less than 1. This means this is the condition for which unstable modes are possible. Of course, we know from from uh, our, from uh, experience that this this liquid jet can never just diverge into uh, can these perturbations can never grow um, uh, infinitely large. So, that is a invalid condition. It can damp down or it can happen, it can be unstable. Okay. So, under what conditions it can be unstable? It can be unstable if the disturbances, if the wave number of the disturbances times the, the radius, the steady state of this unperturbed state radius is less than 1. Okay. So, of course, uh, we can then plot this thing. And if we plot this dispersion relation as k r 0, we will find that so only less than one conditions are important. So, it has a plot like this. This is 1 and it maximizes at a value of if this is 0 0.6, this is 0 0.8. So, this is the maximum value at which it which it attains. Okay. And this value which gives and this is my omega actually. So, this is omega by k r 0. So, omega is max when k r 0 is equal to 0 0.693, 697. Okay. 
So that means when kr0 is equal to 0 0.697, so for all kr0, k times r0 less than 1, omega i is unstable, okay. And uh, of course, uh, if you just uh, the plot, uh, um, uh, the, 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 uh, no, the, this part is also actually important. So, uh, so if you just um, plot the, 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 uh, the real part of it, you see that this is max when k r 0 is equal to 0 0.697 and this means that the growth rate will be maximum when k r 0 is equal to 0 0.697. Now, what does that mean? k is of course, your 2 pi by lambda which is lambda is better because lambda is the wavelength. So, essentially this, this, this perturbations when you have then this is the wavelength lambda. Okay. So, this, this means that when 2 pi by lambda times r 0 is equal to 0 0.697, then the omega is maximum at that lambda. So, then that lambda is given by or we, if we call that lambda max. That is given by nine point zero two or zero. Okay. So now you see where the two pi comes from. This uh, uh, this. Uh, 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 So, if you just uh, put this, uh, the 2 pi essentially comes from this criteria that if we just take any lambda and we write that 2 pi by lambda. So, the criteria for this jet to be unstable essentially is 2 pi by lambda times r 0 should be less than 1. This means that your lambda should be greater than 2 pi by r 0. So, for all 2 lambda greater than 2 pi by r 0, as long as the lambda, the perturbation wavelength is greater than the circumference of the jet, the jet becomes unstable. Okay. So, of course, uh, that, is the, that is the thing. And of course, it maximizes when uh, lambda is equal to 9.02 times r0. So using this, we can even have a have a breakup. Uh, mm, uh, we can have a uh, we can have a uh, 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 breakup time for the jet, and uh, th that we can obtain as if we uh, try to introduce a time scale. Uh, sorry. Mm. So what we have obtained is that the the fastest growing mode or the, uh, the maximum uh, the fastest growing mode mode happens when k r 0 is equal to 0 0.697 and that corresponds to a lambda max of 9.02 r 0 okay. and if we correspond the time scale the t break up is equal to 1 by omega max then that becomes essentially 2.91 square root of rho r0 cube by sigma. Okay. So, if you have take a water jet of 1 centimeter radius of diameter. So, uh, if a diameter of a water jet is 1 centimeter, then this T break up is about 1 8 seconds which is uh, seems pretty consistent from our uh, own experience. Okay. So, this much is the is a really Plato instability and uh, this is the fundamental mechanism by which a liquid jet breaks up even in absence of any quiescent air, even in absence of gravity, even when there is no viscosity in the liquid. So, that means that a 
liquid jet is inherently unstable because of the surface tension forces uh, that is uh, 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 present in the jet and uh, when that comp competes with this um, it is a competition between pressure, surface tension forces and inertia forces that leads to the breakup of this jet at a characteristic length scale. Okay. So, so then uh, we will go into, uh, into fuel injection okay. and uh, so you know, now coming back to the, the practical gas turbine engine where essentially your, uh, your, your you need uh, you, you have to have something like this where you send out the liquid jet and you expect that the liquid jet will break up because of this fundamental relay plateau mechanisms because of other kelvin helmholtz instabilities relay tailor instabilities because of atomization you need to create fine droplets so the purpose uh, so as a as a engineer you have to then manufacture or you have to select atomizers or you have to select a proper fuel injection devices through which you can inject this uh, this liquid fuels okay and uh, one more thing is that uh, one more thing that you have to keep in mind is that that uh, there can be different kind of injectors available, but uh, these injectors uh, there are multiple multiple co like uh, conflicting requirements. Number one, you need to have very small droplet sizes on one hand, but at the same time, uh, you, if you want to use too small uh, sized orifices, because of course you see that uh, the 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 smaller the, the, the jet, um, uh, the smaller the droplets will be produced. So, you from here itself you can, you can understand that uh, uh, given this, uh, this analysis that uh, if, you have, uh, if you have very small uh, sized, uh, if, you have a, if you have a cylinder which is of very small size, then uh, your, uh, your um, then the size of your, then the, then the breakup length that this lambda will also be small. Okay because your lambda max is directly proportional to the R0. So, what is happening is that you, you are creating this uh, say this is the largest uh, perturbation that is happening on your liquid jet okay. and uh, this is the perturbation that is happening on the liquid jet. Now, where will it pinch off? It will pinch off at this point. So, essentially this lambda okay, this whatever volume of liquid is contained in this lambda will become a droplet. So, after it breaks off in the, in the next step can be like this. So, if I just show you like uh, what is going to happen. So, uh, this liquid jet is uh, like this okay. in the next step it can be formed uh, uh, this this things okay. and then uh, it can form droplets like this okay. in this in different uh, times. So, this lambda the amount of liquid contained in this lambda will become a droplet. Okay. So, clearly if this lambda is small if this, but it will you cannot have arbitrary small lambda because then it will not break up. So, this lambda max say typically it is say 9 times or this uh, ten, 9 times this radius of this liquid jet. Okay. So, this uh, droplets that we will gain get eventually should be proportional this, this droplet size or this d should be proportional to your um, r 0 okay, somehow. So, what you get is essentially if your liquid jet is very thin if it is uh, small in size then you get a very small droplets right obvious. But so, to make small liquid jets what you have to do is that you have to use very small orifices okay. your orifice should be very very small. How but of course, physically you cannot make orifice very small suppose you want to make it 1 micron, but the problem is that some impurities will get unclogged in this 1 micron orifice practically. So, that is a problem practically. So, you can have a theoretical result, but to convert that into reality you need to put some more uh, you need to do some more uh, engineering. So, that it can be practically implementable.